you don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but that was a good one. Free spirit. That is a good one, buddy. Thank you. So today we begin with our uh, litany, which is on the front of your bulletin. You should also have picked up a brand new worship booklet that takes us through the summer and fall. And if you didn't, they're in the back. Also, if you're taking communion in the pew, the communion, the little communion ones are back on the table as well. So please stand if, uh, if you are able. God the Father created us. God the Son restored us by his blood. And God the Holy Spirit recreates us day by day into what God wants us to be. All praise to the Father. All praise to the Son. All praise to the Spirit. The great three in God the Father formed us out of dust. God the Son transformed us by his grace into God's beloved children. And God the Holy Spirit reforms and informs us so that we can serve the Lord. All praise to the Father, all praise to the Son, all praise to the Spirit, the great three in one. God the Father said, let there be light. God the Son said, I am the light. And God the Holy Spirit enlightens everyone with the truth of the gospel. All praise to the Father, all praise to the Son, all praise to the Spirit, the great three in one. God the Father said, Be fruitful. God the Son said, If anyone remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit which are given to us are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All praise to the Father, all praise to the Son, all praise to the Spirit, the great three in one. God the Father rested on the seventh day of creation. God the Son said, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, has come to bring us peace. All praise to the Father, all praise to the Son, all praise to the Spirit, the great three in one. For all the blessings of Father, Son, and Spirit, we praise our triune God. We join in our opening hymn 408, it's found in the red hymn.
on our worship booklet on page four with our greeting, and then we continue with the first hymn of praise on page five. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as our reader, Tom. Thanks for the blessing and our readings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from you. Bless Tom, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Proverbs, beginning with the eighth chapter. Does not wisdom call? and does not understanding raise her voice. On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Word of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Romans, beginning at, the first, beginning at the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Word of God, word of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for our gospel and acclamation. Lord, let my heart be good soil. chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to the mountain where Jesus had told them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus said to them, All authority on heaven and earth has been handed over to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Okay, anybody not know what day this is in the church? Holy Trinity Sunday. It comes always, it's the Sunday after Pentecost, the first Sunday after Pentecost. And it begins a brand new season in our church year. Pentecost ends the Easter season, and Holy Trinity begins this Sundays after Pentecost or ordinary time. And you notice the cover of your worship book that has that circle. We've used this before, which explains the fact that the first half of the year focuses on Jesus' life and him being here with us, and the second half focuses on the church itself. And of course, starting next Sunday, our color will be green for growth, and it's for the, you know, outreach, the growing of the church on earth. When you think of Trinity, I, and, and this is my perspective, I have always struggled with totally understanding this doctrine. Now, we had a discussion about this actually on Friday night at our, uh, the dinner group, and somebody said, oh, it's not that hard to understand, and I said, okay and gave me an example, one of which I've used over the years of water, H2O. You know, water can be found in three different ways, liquid or solid as ice or steam, same element, different forms. Others have used the idea of the actors in the Greek, you know, background, Greek, uh, dramas from years back where they wore different masks. One actor would wear many masks, so it was the same actor, but various parts. Others have used 
relationships, the roles we have in our relationships. For instance, I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a nephew, and you know, you could go on and on and on. One person, many roles. Now these aren't perfect analogies, but maybe they help a bit understanding the Trinity. Still, even the greatest theologians over the 2,000 years of the church have not fully understood and have talked about this in their writings. One of those was Augustine, St. Augustine. Now he was converted to Christianity in 386 by the writings and sermons of Ambrose, who was the Bishop of Milan. Ten years later, Augustine became bishop and served at Hippo on the north coast of Africa. It's now Algeria. So it's, it's said, there's a story about Augustine, which I'm pretty sure is a, uh, what we would call more of a parable or you know, one of those things that somebody decided to fit well. You know, he's walking around the beach where he lived, contemplating how God could be one, and he had three different aspects. Well, suddenly he stopped and he saw a young child. And this child was running to the water, to the ocean, and then would come back with this cup of water and pour it in this hole, which was, you know, on the land. And finally, Augustine said, what are you doing? Well, he said, I'm trying to pour the ocean into this hole. And of course, Augustine laughed and said, well, that's impossible. And it said the child looked at him and said, no more impossible than you trying to put Almighty God into your small mind. So I'm not positive this would have actually happened, but it's a good example. We try and try and try to fully comprehend the Trinity, but it's one of those things in Christianity I don't think we'll ever fully understand. Now, the scripture, the gospel today, Matthew 28, is the only place in the entire New Testament that is mentioned Father, Son, and Spirit together. So it even makes it more difficult to explain to people about this Trinity because it's not mentioned other than in that one place. But there's also a lot of other things in our faith lives and in our regular lives that are hard to understand, to comprehend. For instance, why do good people suffer? A question we all ask. Why does life seem so unfair at times? And why doesn't God just make faith a lot easier? There's things that we can never fully comprehend. So we can spend our lives trying to figure all this out, or we can look at it as we're never going to figure it out, so we can have a joyful life through Christ by trusting, just trusting God. We don't have to have the answer to everything to fully trust God. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that says, the bird does not sing because he has an answer. He sings because he has a song. I really like that. The bird's not sing because he has an answer. He sings because he has a song. And I may not understand fully the mystery of God in three persons, but I certainly can enjoy God the Creator in the beauty of God's creation. I may not understand how this child of Bethlehem can be part of this Godhead, but I can read with awe and contemplate the life of Jesus of Nazareth, his teachings. I may not fully understand what there is to understand about the comfort that Jesus sent, but there's been times in my life when that comforter, that Holy Spirit, has enveloped me with love and support. So I don't have to fully understand this concept of God in three persons to experience the grandeur of what that means for my life. Now, there is one final thing that's said, that one day 
it'll all be revealed to us. St. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12a. This is after that infamous love chapter, ending, you know, with love is the greatest gift of all. He said, now we see through a glass darkly or dimly, but then we will see face to face. Then, meaning when we are with God. So in order to save money, a college drama class purchased only a few scripts of this play they were going to perform and cut them up into the parts. So the director gave each player their part and began to rehearse. Nothing went right. After an hour of miscues and mangled sequences, the cast finally gave up and the director said, sit down, let me read to you this play to help you understand. And when he finished, one of the actors said, oh, that's what it's about. And when they understood the entire story, they were able to fit these parts together and have a successful rehearsal like that with the Trinity and with understanding God. And C.S. Lewis once said, the most frequently spoken word in heaven would be, oh, as in, oh, now I understand, or oh, now I see what God's plan was, or oh, now I see why I went through that trial. Now, we don't have that luxury now in the world. We walk by Faith, as we're told, not sight or knowledge. But one day, it'll be revealed and we'll be in the presence of God, the Father, Son, and Spirit. But how can we be in the presence of all three at once? Well, I'm not sure really how that will be. I haven't been there yet. Anybody been? Oh, if you have, let us know so you can explain all of this to us, right? If you have, you wouldn't be here, imagine, right? <clears throat> that is our hope, though, that one day we will understand. We will know what it's all about. And there's answers that are too large for our, I would say, little brains. They may seem big, but they're not compared to God's universe. But our greatest need is not understanding, but to trust in God. And that means to trust that God the Father, Son, and Spirit are experienced every day in our lives. May we place our trust in God, even though we will never fully comprehend this three-in-one one in three, the Trinity. Let us pray. Dear God, you have given us many things in our faith walks. Some of them are too difficult to comprehend in this life. But you have promised that eventually, when we're with you, we will understand. Thank you for being with us as the Father, Son, and Spirit in your many forms, especially as the Comforter, the Spirit, who is with us always, as Jesus told his disciples. May we not seek so much to understand everything, but instead to walk by faith, not by knowledge or sight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We're going to take some time for meditation, and we'll sing hymn 412 in the red.
of our worship booklet. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your Church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace. Amen. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have, been, have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace. Yeah. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom. Speak truth. Care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace. Yeah. An abiding comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief, especially those we name before you now. God of grace. Holy Three, you are community, and you create community, build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. God of grace. And holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness even unto death. Especially, we remember the Emmanuel 9, whom we commemorate this week. Console grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. God of grace. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Blessed be Christ, our peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share God's peace with one another as you feel comfortable doing so. As our ushers come forward for the offering, let us pray together.
God, we give you thanks for bringing us here as your people. Guide all who worship you. Please bless these gifts that we have brought to you and will bring to you, that they may be used for your service. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we join in the prayer our Lord has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus said, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You may be seated, and if you have the seal of communion, you may take those at any time with the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you, keep you in his grace. There are some announcements uh, in the bulletin. One of the things I want to mention with outdoor worship on the third, uh, we're looking into if anybody has any ideas of renting one of those tents, the thing of the under, which would help, I think, especially if it's uh, too sunny or, you know, even if it rains a bit, you can be there. So if you have ideas or you know where the best place to do that, let me know uh, and we'll look into that. Other announcements. Ruth, how would I, how do I know? We're just gonna give you a mic of your own and you can <laughs> just excuse me, just a reminder for the ladies in the church that Thursday is probably here at 5 30. And if there's um, someone that you know that's um, that isn't here today, give them a call from the mic. Um, I think that would be nice, and yes, we will have a club going next Sunday. Anything? Anybody else? All right, not seeing anything. We'll have the benediction, and then our closing hymn is 413. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ take care of us. The Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen.